Good morning guys, welcome back. Today, since we had a furnace pulled, uh, this furnace is not operational right now. It will, will come on, it'll tick, it will not ignite. You're not getting any flame, you're not getting any heat from this furnace. So I figured why not go over furnaces because I really wanted to have one pulled so I could show you where wires are going uh, to help answer questions that you'll have in your mind. So the first thing that we're gonna cover this morning is are basically the electronics of the furnace. And we'll go over Atwoods. This is a Suburban SF25, okay? So this applies to Suburbans. Atwoods, they work real similar, but when we get to one of those, we'll point out the differences that they have, okay? So, following the electronics, we have four wires that should be going into your coach from the furnace. You'll have your main ground, you'll have your main positive, and you'll have one power wire or two T-STAT related wires. One will be power up to your T-STAT or AC control board, and one will be signal back down telling the furnace to come back on, okay? I have them tied together to basically imitate a, uh, a thermostat, sending power back down, telling this furnace to come on. Notice I have the switch off so that I can cycle it for the purpose of this video. So we have our power coming in. If you look at your board, there should be spots labeled. This one does say power. We see our piggyback wire, which then through our switch goes up for our thermostat. We have our blower motor. It's also a red wire. So don't get confused with red. There's a lot of red on here. Uh, some of them, there's a lot of blue. Then we have a third red wire that's actually coming back from our sail switch, okay? So when we turn this on and this board receives signal, the fan is gonna start coming on. It's gonna blow for approximately 30 seconds. That's allowing any gas that's in the chamber time to clear out um, any heat to dissipate. After about that 30 seconds, what it's doing during that time also as that fan is blowing is voltage is going to our limit switch. From our limit switch, if everything is okay, through to our sail switch. If everything is good, the fan is blowing, the limit switch isn't stuck open or closed, it should be coming through our limit switch back to our board. So the way I usually start out testing these is the most easiest, and that's from our board. These are a fully DC uh, appliance, so you'll have to have your voltmeter set to DC. Okay, so with our voltmeter set to DC, we'll go ahead and turn on. This furnace is not gonna ignite. I have the propane off. I actually have the gas valve taken apart. So we know we have power coming in. The fan has come on. I know that this is my signal from the T-STAT. So I check here. I'm seeing the 10.8 volts. I know that completing a circuit, it comes back on the red wire. I see my voltage on the red wire. Now if I see it in, but I don't see it back, I'll need to trace that voltage back and see if my limit switch is malfunctioned or my sail switch is malfunctioned. I'm glad that we have this pulled today so I can actually show you how those wires come in. Like we discussed earlier, this is our signal down from the thermostat telling our furnace to activate. Let's see what this wire does. Let's wait for the fan. So if we were to follow this wire, we would see that a couple of things happen here. Okay, little zip ties, kind of hard to follow. This one, sorry guys, I got them confused. If we follow this wire, we see that it actually goes to a spade connector that has another wire crimped into it. So two things are happening here at once. Signal's coming in, but it's going two places. One, it's going to our four pin harness, which is why I said you can check there, okay? If you don't have power there, it's highly unlikely that this failed. So you need to be going inside your coach, looking at your control board or your thermos, thermostat. That's gonna depend on if you have a Dometic uh, 
air conditioner. Uh, from there, it's gonna come from the control board. If you have a Coleman, that's gonna be coming from the thermostat, okay? If you have a furnace only thermostat, that's the spot that you're gonna need to check, okay? So we're coming in, splitting off. One place is our four pin harness. The second place, if you notice guys, follow this wire, it goes back here to the very back of the furnace. There's one coming back too, we'll cover that in a second. We see the white wire coming to our limit switch. That's power two. If this limit switch is not stuck open, uh, hopefully it's not stuck closed either. We have power going through the limit switch to our sail switch, okay? This wire comes up, loops around, comes right here into our sail switch. With that fan blowing, it should activate that sail switch. When that sail switch is activated, it's closed. That's closing the connection. It'll be traveling out on the red wire, small red wire, back to the top of our four pin harness on our control board. That's the electronics. So we have signal coming in, bottom blue wire, limit switch, through limit switch, sail switch, with the fan blowing, sail switch activated, out the red wire, back to the board. Um, use your voltmeter, check for voltage. Uh, if I have this inside of the RV and I haven't pulled it yet and I'm wondering, am I not seeing the voltage back because of my limit switch or my sail switch? Just check for power here. If you don't have power here, well, we've already seen that that is coming from the limit switch. So it's time for us to pull the furnace unless you have access to the back and you can get to the back and inspect and test your limit switch. If we have power here, very easy, check right here. I have power here, but I don't hear. My fan is blowing. My sail switch is closed. My sail switch has gotten stuck open. Now we're gonna go ahead. Uh, this furnace would not light. I pulled the gas valve. I'm gonna show you guys what happened with this. Okay guys, so when this furnace wouldn't ignite and I had all the other things lining up electronically, there are a few things that I do if I have this furnace inside of the RV still. I will try to smell as the gas valve is activated, as the solenoid is activated, I'll try to smell for propane. Let me briefly cover real quick on our four pin harness ground. This brown wire is our positive line for our gas valve solenoid, okay? If we were to follow those wires, again, brown, brown comes over loops in on the bottom and then yellow again ground so we have our positive for our gas valve solenoid our yellow okay if I'm not smelling propane yes I'll briefly want to check my brown wire on my four pin harness to make sure that I'm getting voltage if I am getting voltage on my brown wire and I hear the solenoid thunk then I'm going to want to look inside toward the orifice if I don't smell any propane on this one I did smell propane on certain instances and sometimes I did not. I did hear the tick of the igniter, um, but still weren't getting any flame. So let me tell you also how I'll really quick bench test this board. Of course, I'm checking voltages on my four pin harness. Everything lines up there. I wanna check my igniter. Is it working like it should, right? So I will usually, give me a pair of pliers, hold that relatively close I'm looking for a bright arc. Hopefully I can edit out these seconds that we're waiting for that. Okay guys, I'm not sure if you can see that, but we do have an arc as well as in here. Okay. Since I have the furnace pulled, Going to want to go over to the other end make sure there as well that i have another bright arc okay you can see there i have a nice pretty arc so no problems with the ignition. I'm 
Now guys, the reason that I pulled this top part is to me it seemed like we're having an issue with gas flow. I knew the electronics were working correctly. I knew I had good ignition. Okay, fuel, have good airflow. Where's my fuel at, right? A lot of times I've, I've had mice. I've had frogs get inside of here. I've had bugs get inside of here, build nests inside of there so the gas can't flow through there. I've had mud daubers and other insects build nests on the igniter across the metal so I can't get that good arc that I'm looking for. Gnats and other bugs love this orifice. And I'm not sure if you guys can tell on this video, but our orifice is clogged, okay? So we're gonna take that out, clean that, and see how everything goes. Okay guys, not sure if you can see, but our orifice has been cleaned. I didn't do much, I just used a little bit of uh, water. Some water, uh, I blew through it to clear out all of the gnats, okay? So I would advise you against using anything like a paper clip or a, a small gauge wire because if you enlarge this orifice, your furnace is not gonna work the way you want it to. It can actually be dangerous. That is designed to let just the right amount of uh, fuel through for this furnace. So reinstalling, this is after the gas valve. No pipe dough or Teflon tape needed. Number seven socket, okay. Always be careful. This is soft metal. You can strip that out. Just gonna kind of snug it up. All right. Let me put all this back together and get some of that out of there. We'll see how we do, guys. Hey okay, guys, we're back. We have cleaned our orifice as we saw earlier. We have reinstalled our gas valve. Don't forget to keep this sealed. You want to put some more putty there. You want to seal off your propane and combustion carbon monoxide from the inside of the coach. Here back is blowing inside of the coach. We want our exhaust gases, anything else to be coming outside of the coach, okay? We are ready to start it up. We're gonna activate. That is gonna send our signal from the thermostat to our spade connector. Remember we saw our spade connector back there, guys? From our spade connector, we are going to the blue wire on our on our four pin harness and we're going to our limit switch in the back through the limit switch we should be coming up to our sail switch with the fan blowing sail switch should be closed allowing voltage through back to our red wire on our board after approximately 30 seconds our board should activate uh, the gas valve by sending positive DC voltage on the brown wire to the gas valve and we should begin our ignition process with our igniter let's fire it up and have a go see we have lit that's pretty hot coming out of there can't see anything in our burn chamber but we have lit you'll notice that our board has continued to supply voltage to our gas valve check that out letting us know that the flame has been sensed keeping that voltage to our gas valve because the flame is sensed. Never forget guys, you saw the uh, igniter electrode when I had it in there. If this thing isn't sensing the flame, you gotta make sure that that electrode is properly adjusted. Some people say 3 16th, some say an eighth. I go in between, I also look for the arc. When I'm in there, I'm looking for that arc. It needs to be close enough to the metal uh, to create an arc without grounding out on the metal. If you're too close to that metal, you'll ground out, you won't get an arc. If you're too far away, you still might get an arc, but you might be far enough away where it does not sense the heat. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll cover the Atwoods next. 
and then after we cover the Atwoods guys we'll go inside and we'll see how different brand air conditioners control these furnaces.